Do I see people joining? It's so exciting. Excited. Yay. I feel like I should have some fun music playing for us, but we're only going to be here for one minute until we get started. I just want to give people time to join. What would be your like background music to get this kicked off? I don't know. I was thinking like for this one specifically, like if there was architecture vibe music, but uh extra vibe, some like jazz, like smooth yeah, jazz some in the jazz. background. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, it is 301. So we are gonna get started. All right, hold please. I'm doing that uh millennial pause where I press a lot of buttons real quick on a computer. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Really excited to have you here. Um, as you know, fall recruitment is in full swing, and we are here to give you expert insights into a wide variety of career paths so that you can be as successful as possible as you move forward in your search. We're bringing together all kinds of people from different industries, and today we have a early careers program manager with STV, an architecture, engineering, and construction firm. So for the next 20 minutes, um, Sam and I are going to talk in our sort of planned out conversation, but please, please, please chime in by submitting questions using the Q&A box, and we'll get to as many as we can before we wrap up. And then as a reminder, you won't be able to see the questions other people are submitting. So we're not ignoring you. We get a lot of questions and we're just working our way through them. But whatever we get, we'll definitely use to help make sure our events are as helpful to you as possible. So with that, Sam, get us started. Can you introduce yourself and give us a little background on who you are and what you do at STV? Yes, definitely. So hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today talking with you all. Uh, so howdy, my name is Sam Turkelson. I'm the Early Careers Program Manager for STV. Um, I've been with STV for just over six and a half years. I started with another engineering firm that STV actually acquired. Um, and I started there as an intern while I was at Texas A&M University. Um, whoop, I graduated and then became full time. Um, we were acquired, like I said, by STV. And I've just continued to build my career here. So just a little bit about STV. We are one of the top infrastructure focused professional services firms in North America. We were founded in 1912. Um, so been around a long time, which is awesome. Uh, we advise, plan, design, engineer, and deliver the infrastructure that powers our local economies, including transportation systems, buildings, water, and other facilities. Um, we are headquartered out of New York City, actually out of the Empire State Building, but I'm located out of our Fort Worth, Texas office, um, which is one of over 60 offices that we have with over 3,000 employees. Um, we're ranked 35th in the engineering news records um, top 500 design firms and 11th in its transportation category. And then a uh, fun fact about STV, um, in 2022, we signed the Equity and Infrastructure Project Pledge, um, and we became one of the first AEC or Architecture, Engineering and Construction firms to commit to advancing equity and infrastructure, which is really awesome. So I'm um, in my role as uh, the Early Careers Program Manager. I manage our intern, our college recruiting, our mentoring, and our early careers programs. And I also serve on our DEIB Council. So. Cool. Thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate you um, defining AEC fields as well, because um, that will be a big focus of today's conversation. So to that point, every recruiting process sort of looks different depending on what field you're in. So I'd love for you to walk us through what the recruiting process looks like for AEC or ACE fields. And is there anything unique or specific to you all that you can give insight on? Definitely. So when it comes to college recruiting, I would say it's it's pretty similar to how any standard college recruiting process is going to go. What sets the AEC, indus AEC industry apart um, just a little bit is we will also, in addition to career fairs and organization meetings and things like that, what I see a lot is you're going to have folks that will advise senior design classes, um, that will go into colleges and teach, you know, technical seminars, things like that, and mentor folks within organizations. So these are great ways to get to know people and get to know firms that you may not have heard of before. Um, so a big piece of advice that I always give to folks is if you are going 
to be attending anything like that. Or if someone comes into one of your classes and is talking to you, go up afterwards and introduce yourself, get to know them, learn a little bit about what the firm that they work for does, um, because it is such a broad industry and there are so many different projects out there that really finding the firm that is the best fit for you is so important. And I believe that that starts with, you know, networking and um, all of that. Yeah. And a great way of networking is job fairs and recruiting events. And now is the time for those. We are in peak job fair and recruiting season. So do you have any advice for job seekers to get the most out of these opportunities? I know they can be a little overwhelming and a little nerve wracking. So would love your take on that. Yeah, yeah, I I remember it well, um, or not so well, I guess, uh, from my time in college, I just remember feeling so you know, anxious about attending the fairs and there's so many companies there and you don't really know where to start. Um, it's funny because I actually had this conversation with my cousin, Liz. She's a junior at Virginia Tech um, earlier this week because she was attending some stuff and she asked me for my advice. And I said, let me break it down really simple. So I'm going to break it down really simple for y'all too. Um, master your elevator speech. Just keep it as simple as possible. Make sure that you're saying your grad year, what is your major, what's your focus, especially for my AEC majors out there. You want to make sure that if there's a specialty that you want to go into, um, like for example, if you're a civil engineer and you want to do structural design, make sure that you're saying that in your elevator speech so it's very clear right from the beginning. Um, like I said, make sure that you're mentioning when you're graduating and then what you're looking for. Are you looking for full-time, internship, things like that? Um, a lot of folks will go on and get their master's degrees. And so the graduation date on your resume may be correct, but you also may be considering grad school. So maybe you're looking at an internship, even though it may appear that you're looking for a full-time opportunity. Um, make sure that you can summarize any previous job experience that you have or any project work if you don't have job experience. Um, I always like to use the formula, do something, talk about something that you did, something that you learned and something that you're excited about. I think that that's a good way to convey any sort of previous experience, whether that's project or job um, that you've had. And then make sure that you just have something that you do outside of work to talk about, whether that's an organization, if you are in a professional org, um, a sorority or your fraternity or any groups like that. Um, if you are involved in your community, talk about the job that you have in college too. That's totally okay. Um, just anything that helps kind of set you apart and make you memorable to the recruiter that you're talking to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is, there's so much great advice there from like making sure to highlight the transferable skills from what you would maybe not consider to be experience is actually experience. Like you just said, totally. organizations, public service. And then something that also stood out to me that I think is sort of goes beyond the idea of career fairs is this idea of knowing exactly what your ask is and, you know, what you want. So in your elevator pitch saying, this is what I want. It's something that I always tell people on their resume, put that objective there so that yes. the looking at it knows where to put you when you're writing someone like a cold email or any of that, like knowing what your ask is clearly helps that person receiving it so much and then they know how to proceed with you and are more apt to help. So on that absolutely note, how can to get more into the nitty-gritty of the application, do you have any advice for students to make a good first impression? Good, sorry, I haven't had my coffee. A good first impression when it comes to their resume and any common mistakes you maybe want to warn people about. Definitely. So if there's one thing that you take away from this session, um, please put your graduation year on your resume. I know that that sounds silly, but there is a trend going on right now where it is being left off. Um, that is very confusing for recruiters. It's confusing when you submit your application online. So just make sure that that's on there. Again, if you're planning on doing grad school, which is very common, that's totally okay. You can clarify on there in italics or however you want to write it um, that that's your plan and that's why your grad, grad date may look a little bit different. Um, make sure that you're tailoring your resume to the job description of the role that you're applying to. Uh, take some of those skills. You talked about transferable skills. Take some of those skills and make sure those are listed. Um, it's okay to use the same words that are in the job description. Um, you know, if, for example, if you have AutoCAD um, in the job description and um, you have experience with AutoCAD, which is a, a technical software that engineers use, um, make sure that you're putting that on your resume because that will help the recruiter go, okay, they've got that and send it on to the hiring manager. Um, when you do add that skill to your resume, just make sure that you can talk about it in an interview because it most likely will be asked about. And the last thing you want is to sit there kind of 
deer in headlights. Um, we've all been there with saying that we're proficient in Excel. Um, and you just, the last thing you want is to not be able to answer that question. Um, and then probably the last piece of advice that I have is stick to one page. Um, unless you're in a PhD program or maybe you're a student that has gone back to school um, and you have a good amount of previous work experience, you really don't need to have your resume be more than one page. There are tons of great templates out there that I recommend looking at, whether it's using Microsoft or Google Docs or Canva or whatever, but just try and keep that down to one page. Yeah. I'd also continue that and say, make sure you're sending it as a PDF. That might seem like common oh, yes. knowledge, but I know that that is when people are starting out something that isn't so obvious. So PDF one pager. Um, yes. Thank you for all of that great advice. Like I'm sitting here, I'm learning some stuff. I'm not in an AEC field and I'm like, oh, these are good tips. Um, so to that end, are there any skills that pertain to working in AEC that you often see overlooked by candidates in their applications? Yeah. So like I mentioned before, definitely make sure that you're including anything that you've done that you may think, I don't need to include this on my resume. So anything you've done with your organizations, anything that, that can show teamwork, communication skills, um, time management skills, things like that, just because you haven't had professional work experience doesn't mean that you haven't had relevant experience for the role that you're applying for. Um, and when it comes to AEC resumes specifically, I feel like so many people are so worried about making sure that they have all the different softwares that they've ever heard of, right? Um, and that they're listed and that you show that, you know, you've heard about XYZ. Um, most of the time when we're looking at resumes, we want to see that you've taken the relevant courses to kind of give you that really strong foundation to be able to do the work when you are an intern or are a new grad. Um, we give you so much on the job training. Whenever you're here, you learn so much of what you do just by sitting next to your manager or your um we call them new hire partners or intern partners here at SCV. Um, and you'll learn a lot from them. So to us, that is really important that you can show that you are willing to learn and willing to kind of grow um, as you go. So if the job description says required, like for example, going to an ABET accredited university for engineering, make sure that's on there. Um, but if it says preferred qualifications, you know, you can always kind of spin that in your skills section for however it works best for you. Yeah. And then if you do make it to the interview process, you can then expand on how those totally. relevant skills transfer. So on that note, how does someone stand out if they do get, if slash when they get an interview? <laughs> yeah. So please make sure that you're researching the company before you come in and come prepared with questions. Um, there is so much information out there, whether you are looking at the company website, if you're looking at their handshake or their LinkedIn feeds, um, so many companies have social media pages now on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or X, I guess, or whatever, um, go and do a little bit of research, find something that you find interesting. I know when I had my interview, um, I came in and I was talking about a recent philanthropy thing that they had done. And I know that stood out to my previous manager, she was like, I thank you for looking at that and bringing that up. That's yes, that is something that's important to us. So it was something outside of just kind of the, the amazing project work that we do um, that helped me personally stand out. Um, as far as AEC specific, when you're in an interview, make sure that you are prepared for technical questions. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to spend a bunch of time studying like you do for an exam or things like that. But I would definitely make sure that you've brushed up on any of the basics, maybe from previous classes, for example, if you're a civil engineer um, and you're applying for a uh, transportation roadway internship or something like that, just make sure that you're prepared to talk about those things that you may have learned previously in, in your courses. Yeah. And I've found sort of in some of my more technical interviews I've experienced, it also helps to do a little like Google news search on, you know, trending topics in that field. Yeah. So like speaking of roadways, maybe there was a bridge collapse. Like, I know that's a little dark, but staying on top of like those trends in your industry so that you can have that genuine and informed point of view. And it really doesn't take long. Like if you read the headline, you're probably good. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's the same thing with checking on their social media and stuff. I mean, you can literally do it first thing in the morning or, you know, while you're laying on your couch and you've got 
House of Dragon or whatever on and you're scrolling, I just take a look, take a screenshot so you remember and then bring that up in your interview. For sure. All right. So <laughs> networking is so important no matter what field you're in. And you should continue networking even after you get that first job. And I know a lot of networking happens within the workplace itself. So do you have any tips on creating those positive connections and networking opportunities um, while you're at work? And yeah, definitely. your first roles? So this is going to sound a little corny, but be yourself. I tried so hard to follow the path and be so buttoned up and so professional. I even went as far as to like go by my government name, like which Samantha, I just, I go by Sam in every other aspect of my life. Um, so I don't know why I was like, oh, I'm going to go by Samantha professionally, but just make sure that you're being yourself before you go to your interview. Um, take a deep breath. Just make sure that you feel comfortable, that you're all good to go. Just know that you're in a unique position to be interviewing with the firm, but you are not necessarily in a unique position to the folks that you're interviewing with. And what I mean by that is this is the thing that everyone at some point has been in this position. Everyone has been starting their first job before, starting their first internship before. Um, and so it's just important to remember that these people have been through this before too. Um, they understand that you may not have all the answers and that's okay. You're there to learn and you're there to grow. And if you're with the right company and interviewing at the right place, um, they're going to help you grow and get to where you need to be. So um, just be open to any opportunity. Um, I never expected myself to end up in the AEC world or in engineering in general. Um, and I decided to kind of push myself and and do something that was a little daunting to me at the time. And I'm so grateful that I did because I've been able to grow and thrive here um, and do really impactful, fulfilling work. So I'm just really grateful that I was uncomfortable, but I pushed myself and, you know, almost seven years later, I'm still here. So. Love that. And something you made me think of with your answer, and I'm sure you're uniquely qualified from your position to respond to this is, I know in my experience, even if I get the interview and I don't end up getting the job, I always looked at the person interviewing me as a new part of my network because yes. as long, you know, the interview probably went well, no matter what. And then you write your thank you note and then down the line, you keep in touch with them. And if another position opens up, so you stay on their mind so that when the right job does open, they're thinking of you before you even you know, have to yeah. reach out to them. Would you? That is such a good point. Yes. I do not underestimate the impact of a thank you note. Um, you know, folks think I, no one's going to read it. They are absolutely read and they're absolutely talked about. Um, when someone writes a thank you note, it's like that special extra little bit that people get excited about. And they just know that, you know, even if it was a 30 minute interview that you were grateful to have that opportunity, go and connect with them on LinkedIn, go follow them on Handshake. Um, all of that, stay connected. I'm still connected with the folks that I was interns with, um, you know, seven years ago and getting to see what they're up to. But I also know, you know, we're all connected. We see what we're doing and you, you never know when a new opportunity is going to come from that. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited. We have a ton of Q&A questions oh, awesome. from our fabulous students attending. So we're going to hop right in. I want to get to as many as possible. So for someone interested in both the construction and engineering fields, is there any advice or things to consider um, when choosing which field to enter first, i.e. construction management, wow, this is detailed, then engineering design versus engineering, then construction? <laughs> that is a really good question. Okay, so what I would do I, I really recommend going the internship route. So figure out which side of it interests you the most and try and find an internship in that. I, I think that internships are the best way to learn, um, especially when you're interested in both sides. The cool thing about working at an AEC firm is you are going to get that exposure to everything anyway. We really try um, at STV, and I know lots of firms do this as well, but to make sure that our interns are aware of what the rest of the company is working on and kind of how the groups all interact with each other. Um, we host sessions over the summer for our interns to learn about the different groups here. Um, and we've had folks that have transferred from one group to another for their future internships if they 
realized that that was the route that they wanted to go where they found that more interesting or interesting in a different way, I guess. Everything's interesting. Yeah. The more people I meet here at Handshake and hear from, you know, I'm on the feed just like everybody here. I, the more and more I see that there's no such thing as a straight line to a career. That's a winding totally. path. And all of that experience is important, no matter what order it's in. And it will always surprise you. So I think the both of us represent that. Um, so looking um, at this next question we have, is it possible for freshmen who are brand new in their major in architecture to get an internship? Yes, 100%. Uh, we actually had an intern this summer at STV who had just graduated high school. She was at an industry event and met um, one of our senior leaders, and he was just so impressed. And we ended up making her an internship offer. And so she got to intern with us this summer, and she just started her freshman year, um, probably just now a couple of weeks ago. So it definitely is possible. I highly recommend when you are in the position of being a freshman in college, um, attend the career fairs. Don't go and talk to the recruiters. Um, I have never met a freshman that I wasn't impressed by for having the courage to actually go and walk up to a recruiter and talk to them. I know when I was a freshman in college, that was not what I was doing. So um, I definitely, I think it's very impressive. And those are the people that you'll remember uh, later on down the line. So definitely go to industry events. Um, make sure that you're going to the career fairs. Join an organization that is relevant. Um, to you. So if it's an architecture, try and find an architecture group on campus. Uh, normally your advisor can give you advice on that as well. Yeah. I mean, I had two internships freshman year, so I say, heck there yes, get started. Um, yeah. All right. This one's a little more specific. How does 3D modeling factor into the ACE field, specifically architecture? And is that a required skill for um, these fields? I would definitely say it's not required. Um, it does factor into it, um, just like kind of anything, any other type of technical skill that may be out there, whether we're talking AI or if we're talking a new software, things like that. Um, the AEC field is evolving constantly. Um, we have so many different types of professionals that are doing so many different things with so many different types of softwares that um, it's a really interesting space to be in right now. So if you do have experience with it, highly recommend putting it on your resume. It's always a good conversation starter. Um, I would definitely say it's not a requirement, you know, early on, um, yeah. but you may grow and see more of it. Yeah. And the, there was another part of this question that I think is really broadly applicable for the types of roles that STV or other ACE companies are hiring for. Does it require a major that falls within, you know, those fields to be considered? Yes. So it's a good question. It does. Um, there are different roles that are going to require different majors. So if you are looking, if you're applying to like, say, a civil engineering internship, we're going, one of the requirements is going to be that you go to an ABET accredited school, um, ABET, if you want to look it up. And basically that's just saying that the program has been evaluated um, and that, you know, the engineering program is certified to teach engineering to, to the students. In those cases, those, we are going to want somebody that is from an accredited school, um, and has that, that major within. When it comes to architecture, it's a little different. Um, you could kind of have a broader view on it. And so it, we may not put in there that we need that requirement, depending on the work that you're going to do. Ultimately, when you become an engineer or you become an architect, um, there is a path to professional licensure. And a lot of the times to get your professional license, you do need to have a degree from a certain type of school. Um, chances are, if you don't know if your school is accredited, I would just go and talk to your advisor or go and look it up. There's a whole entire list of all of the schools that are. Um, so yes, for some of our internships and some of our full-time positions, it will require you to have a specific degree from a specific school. Um, but that will always be there in the job description whenever you're applying. So you'll know. Perfect. And sort of still on the same, uh, we had a lot of questions in this same sort of, uh, I don't know why I want to say the word vibe, but that category, that's the sure. one. Um, so someone is asking, they haven't had any internships 
or jobs related to AEC yet. So they're wondering if you have any advice for how to build their portfolio with relevant things to put on their resume. Yeah, that's a great question. So I highly recommend, um, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times, but going and maybe putting in a project that you've done. Um, like for example, if you are a freshman, I know at um, my alma mater, so at, at A&M, they do a project with with Legos as you know a freshman or a sophomore. You can put that on your resume and really kind of tailor it to the position that you're applying for, again, we're really looking for transferable skills. So did you work on a team? Were you able to learn and listen from maybe a team lead or something like that? Um, so even if you haven't had that technical internship, again, don't worry, it's okay. Just try and put some sort of project, um, even if it's on an engineering one, just something that shows that you've done teamwork and time management skills and communication and you were able to stick to a deadline because that is such a big part of being within the AEC industry. Cool. And I think this might be one of our last questions. Um, this person is saying they have experience in project management and are looking to get hired quick. So are there any jobs within the AEC field that hire more regularly as opposed to like more specific and, you know, roles that take longer or less common? Yeah. So I know, um, especially right now, uh, summer internships, we are already interviewing. We're already hiring. Um, we're going through that entire process. We're doing the same thing for new grad positions. Um, so those would definitely be what I would be looking for. Um, I highly recommend that when you're looking at firms, I know everybody, you know, may go to the ones that where they see all the ads and they go to the career fairs and they've got the huge booths and everything else like that. But I really encourage y'all to maybe look at a firm that you haven't heard of before. Um, had I not done that, I wouldn't be talking with y'all today because I hadn't heard of the firm that STV acquired that I actually started with. Um, and honestly, I hadn't heard of STV until just shortly before we had gotten acquired. Um, so definitely make sure that um, you're, you're taking a look and you're being open to any sort of firm um, and kind of apply to anything that kind of seems interesting to you. But yeah, I would say right now, there's not one specific job that is hiring more than another. Um, but I know lots of companies have their summer internships and their full-time positions open. So it's never too early to be looking. I know it feels a little early because y'all just went back to school, but. Yeah. When you just said you're hiring for your summer internships, I was like, holy moly. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get started early. Um, yeah. So um, I'm just getting very specific for these last few questions. All good. So, this person is asking, um, are certifications such as CMIT, LEED, OSHA, et cetera, really helpful? And would you recommend getting these certifications during the student phase or after someone gets a job? That's a great detailed question, actually. Um, if you can get a certification while you're still in school, I highly recommend it. Um, as somebody that waited to get a certification until after I had graduated, you're already kind of in the mindset of studying and, and preparing for exams and things like that. So anything you can get, I would recommend getting. I will tell you when it comes to like OSHA specifically, um, if your company is going to require it, uh, they will provide that training to you. So for example, any of our interns that need to be OSHA 10 certified, we just give them the training whenever they first start, they're certified now, and you can put that on your resume for the rest of your career, pretty much. Um, so as far as any sort of other, you know, certifications or licensure you can get, there is the fundamentals of engineering exam um, that I know some folks can take kind of towards their, the end of their senior year. From all of the engineers that I talk to, um, I highly recommend taking that exam if you can while you're still in school, just because then you come in, you've got your EIT, it's all good, and you don't have to necessarily worry about it after you um, start full time somewhere. Perfect. So we have our last question really quick. Um, how can we express that our programs are A, B, E, T in our resumes? Yeah, yeah. So um, most of the time you don't need to. Um, if it's, you know, one of the major schools that's being recruited out of, chances are the recruiter or the manager that's looking at it is going to know um, that it is ABET accredited. If it's something where, you know, we need to double check, we'll go into the system and look at it. You don't necessarily have to put that it's ABET accredited on your resume. So don't don't necessarily worry about that. Um, but feel free to put it on your resume if you'd like to. I don't, you know, more information is better than less, but just make sure again that you're sticking to one page. 
Yeah, I was going to say one page, yeah. people. <laughs> All right. So this time has flown by. Um, thank you so much, Sam. We're really excited to bring everyone here more types of events in the future. So please, please, please take 30 seconds to fill out our post-event survey in the chat. We want to know what you're interested in seeing from us and check out our events page to see upcoming recruiter workshops and more. So, Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you sharing your time. And everybody, please have a great rest of your week. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>